where some of the cards haven't been printed or, or, or made online yet. Uh, and it does resemble Pioneer, but there's some notable absences that does change the metagame up somewhat substantially. So if you haven't seen Explorer before, settle in and we'll uh, take you through. These are two of the more popular decks that you'll see in Explorer. Yeah. Uh, you know, notably, w one of the bigger decks in Explorer, for example, the, the Mono Green Devotion deck. Right. Right. Nykthos is an extremely in, in powerful, in Pioneer, in Pioneer yeah. rather. You're not going to see that here. However, the Rakdos midrange deck that was kind of the big bad coming into this, very similar um, to the Rakdos midrange decks that you'll see here. There are even a few lists um, for players in the field that are identical to Pioneer archetypes as well. So it is actually quite close. And by the way, key cards up are right there. You saw Grease Fang, Parhelion. And then we had Grizzly Salvage, but pick, pick a way to get something into the graveyard, and, and that fits that role. What can people look for um, if they haven't seen this Grease Fang deck do its thing yet? So what this deck's really trying to do in the early turns of the game is basically cast a spell that fills up your graveyard, right? And what you really want to do, ideally, is put Parhelion into your graveyard. Now, there's 10 vehicles in the deck, typically, just because you want to hit a critical mass of targets when you try to put these cards in your graveyard. It's not like you're milling over 10 cards, right? Here, Riku is likely going to cast this Witherbloom command, put three cards in the yard, and hope to put a Parhelion into the graveyard. Because if he does, with that Grease Fang in hand, boom, that's 13 damage coming in on turn three. You can see that uh, Riku has a Parhelion in hand, and what did we see? Not not one going in there. So there's no vehicles currently in Riku's graveyard, but you do see a Liliana of the Veil in Riku's hand. So what he's going to try to set up now is go turn three Liliana, discard Parhelion, and then go with the Grease Fang on the following turn. Now, does he have to consider this token here for Logan um, as a, you know, minus Liliana situation, or is it better to just go over the top and set up the Parhelion next turn? The thing is, the Rakdos deck is kind of low to the ground. I think it's more important. Oh, excuse me. There is another Liliana in Riku's hand, but uh, Riku actually just trying to play maybe a slightly longer game here and choosing to kill the token. And he, he can just do it next turn, right? Right, right. Now, however, this does leave your Liliana that you have currently in play a little bit vulnerable, right? If Logan Nettles goes something like Mayhem Devil into uh, some way to sacrifice a permanent that deals one damage to the Liliana. But this does get that token off the battlefield. And one thing that's surprisingly, uh, one thing that's a little bit surprising about this Abzan Grease Fang deck is it can play a fair game, right? You're mm. playing powerful cards in your deck. You're playing Liliana of the Veil. You're pl you can just hard cast the Seekers Chariot. You can play Sky Sovereign, right? And you can win a lot of games that way if the games go a little bit longer. This is one of my favorite sweet spots for an archetype, right? Where you can, you have the ability to do something uh, broken, busted, insane but you're not so all in on it that you can't just play a game of Magic. We've seen that um, those type of decks have been some of the most successful decks that we've seen across all formats before. You know, Splinter Twin is one that comes to mind um, in multiple formats as well. It has a fair game plan that it can do that's actually quite strong, but it can oops, I killed you. Right. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not quite Splinter Twin level, but not many decks are. No, right? no. But, I know but exactly it's in what that you range, mean. right? right, right, right. Where, you, like, it can do the thing. Yeah, absolutely. You can just beat people down with Rafine's Informant, get them with the Grease Fang, cast the Seekers Chariot. Sure, they kill your Informant, you just cast Cancel away just to get it back, right? It allows you to beat a lot of the hate cards that you might see out of the sideboard. Well, another really nice thing about this deck is you can play four copies of Witherbloom Command in your deck, which not only is a way to fill up your graveyard, it's just a four of in your main deck that allows you to deal with hate cards, right? The fact that you can kill Rest in Peace, Unlicensed Hearse out of the sideboard, and have a card that you're completely happy playing in the main deck just makes it a really, really strong option in this deck. Take a look at Witherbloom Command there on your screen. Very versatile card. And by the way, we're seeing it here. This is Liliana plusing. Parhelion 2 is going to hit the graveyard, and we see Grease Fang, Okiba Boss in hand now for yeah, Riku Kuma guys. So here we go. And Logan doesn't have any way to stop no. stop this from happening here. Can't fatal push, right? There's no onboard sacrifice effect. You just go Grease Fang, get Parhelion into play, crew the Parhelion, get in for 13, and guess what? You still have two angels in play to deal with. And this is Incredibly going to be incredibly powerful. Really, really tough here for Logan to deal with. I mean, Logan can claim the firstborn one of the tokens, but remember, Riku can just get that Parhelion back into the graveyard with that Liliana in play. 
That's right. Incredible combination there. Grease Fang, Okiba Boss, having that fourth power, right? Like, I could see this card printed as a 3-3, three, three, but that one extra power gives it that crew ability for Parhelion and enables this to be just a straight-up two-card combo once you have it in the graveyard. Super powerful stuff. Look what it's left behind. Yeah, yeah. Like, so, so here, I'm wondering if there is a way for Logan to potentially get this Liliana off the battlefield. To strand the Parhelion. Right. What you can do is steal the Angel, right? You claim the Firstborn on the Angel. That's certainly something that Logan is going to do. Definitely going to attack with the Angel. Do you want to attack with the Mayhem Devil? I don't know. If you did, that would ensure that you get Liliana off the battlefield. But you can also... You also have a Witch's Oven available to you, right? So if this trade happens, you can Witch's Oven, potentially sack the Reflection of Kiki Jiki, and then sack the food token, sure. right, to deal two points of damage to Liliana. Because Logan knows he cannot allow that Liliana to stay on board, right? The thing he doesn't know <laughs> is that there's another Liliana in hand for Riku Kuma guy, and <laughs> he really has his bases covered here. He is going to be able to, regardless of if this Liliana stays on the battlefield, rerun the Parhelion. I mean, it would actually be best for Logan to try to figure out a way to kill uh, Grease Fang, but I don't see a way to do that here either. Yeah, and Riku's just got kind of redundancy here, right? It's he like, does. okay, look, if you can kill this Liliana, I have a backup. If you kill my Grease Fang, I have this Can't Stay Away. Two copies of it. No Graveyard heart, graveyard Hate cards in the main here for Logan Nettle, so uh, it's going to be really hard for Logan to deal with everything that Riku's hand has. It's just completely loaded here. If you, can, if you go with the Village Rights, you still have the option of dealing a damage here to Liliana, and perhaps you can find a, a removal spell on top of that and kill that, that Grease Fang. Oh, it's another claim the Firstborn. So born. that does work. You claim the Firstborn on the Grease Fang, oh, no, cast no, Witches Oven, sack the Grease Fang, and boom, that's one damage to the Liliana. Wow, so he actually found a way to get both of these permanents off the battlefield. He did. The question is, can he find enough pressure to kill Riku before he reassembles his combo? That's right. I mean, because Riku's backup plan looks very solid here, right? He can Liliana the Veil just to kill the Mayhem Devil. He could even just cast the Seekers Chariot and start doing that. Right. And remember, Logan's down to five. And right? he has no cards in him. It's possible this Seekers Chariot can just get it done. Yes. That was a nice turn, though, for Logan Nettles, cleaning up the entire board by the end of it. Thanks to that second copy of Claim the Firstborn, he ended up casting two of them that turn. And Rico get, getting aggressive here, going with the Asika's Chariot. Ooh, oh, hello. Called her familiar off the top. Oh. There's a little food for the oven. All right, and with that food token in play, Logan Nettles does have access to an instant speed way to deal three damage. And by having that on board, that prevents Riku from being able to return a vehicle from the graveyard with, Mar uh, with the Grease Fang. And Riku won't be able to get in for a ton of damage here, right? With this combination, Mayhem Devil, Cauldron Familiar, plus Witch's Oven. Yeah, this is one of those situations where Logan Nettles just needs to say, let me know when you're going to combat, and then I'll decide <laughs> if I need to kill one of these cats or a, or, or a chariot or whatever it is, or if you happen to have, wow, Grease Fang off the top as well. He does have a pair of can't stay away in hand too, so he's really well set up. But uh, yeah, he really wants to make sure that he uh, does what he needs to do before things get crude. What a draw here from Logan. I mean, it was just a one mana, one one creature, but again, Logan can now kill a Grease Fang at instant speed. You, because right now, Riku can go Liliana, discard Parhelion with two mana left, can't stay away, right? Get the Grease Fang that's in the graveyard, but it won't be able to get that Parhelion back. I'll tell you, Paul, when I first read Cauldron Familiar, I did not think I would ever see it as much as I have in my life. I thought, oh, somebody might draft that incorrectly every once in a while, and that'll be the end of it. That might be the card I was most wrong about, like because ever? I remember testing with this card. Mm -hmm when I was a member of R&D. I was like, is this card going to be good enough? Whoa, whoa, whoa. So, wait a minute. This is your fault? 
the fact that I've had to watch this Cauldron Familiar bounce whoa, 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 whoa. Look, to an oven, look, look. to a graveyard, we back into... We are a team, <laughs> oh, Marshall. Yeah. Right. I was fault. simply Our a fault. cog, <laughs> right? Maybe a loose cog. <laughs> It is crazy though. I, I, you know, I wonder if we made a list of like top ten one mana creatures of all time. Does Cauldron Familiar crack it? It's interesting because it's not quite powerful enough to, to, oven. to make its way into the kind of the vintage formats that are out there. Right. But in the formats where you see this deck played, I mean, it's 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 just been incredible. Yeah, and you know, I think for most players, right, a lot of time, most most players, the oldest format that they'll actually play is modern, right. Old school vets like us have held a legacy deck or a vintage deck, but this is different. So now uh, Riku has to do a slightly tricky play here. Gonna stack this trigger twice, right? You can sack both. If you have multiple food tokens in play, uh -huh. you can sack all of them to the Culture Familiar to get extra triggers here from the Mayhem Devil. So this is the way that Riku is going to be able to deal three damage to this Grease Fang here. But remember, I mean, Riku still getting in for a lot of damage this turn. Yeah, Lo Logan's trying to take down the Grease Fang. Azika's Chariot does get active. This is a lot of pressure still. Yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a lot of damage. Is Riku going to attack with everything? Just the just Azika's Chariot? If, if, if he does, he gets the free 2-2 two -two this turn, right? Logan probably wants to block. Sitting at a could go down to fairly three. low seven here. Could yeah. go down to three because if he blocks with the Cauldron, Cauldron Familiar, now he, uh, now Logan doesn't have a sacrifice target for that Witch's Oven. That's so right. actually taking the damage here. Yeah, that would shut off the food supply. Oh, boy, there's another one. So the that, second cat, that not quite as good. That much, right? right? Yeah. Exactly. Second Oven would have been a game changer. But oh, absolutely, yeah. yeah. Second Oven would have been a great, great draw here. That would represent four damage on board. But I'm not sure that this is going to be enough here for Logan Meadows. He had to sacrifice that extra food that he had laying around previously. Now, he only has the ability to deal two damage at instant speed with the Cat Oven combo. So next turn, I think we're going to see Grease Fang come into play, get that Parhelion, and Rico should have game one locked up. Really see the raw power of the Obzon Grease Fang deck here in the hands of Riku Kumagai. This has been a really good draw. <clears throat> he had all the pieces lined up in his opener. Yeah, and Logan has no cards in hand, so Riku can comfortably, comfortably just play Grease Fang here. And not, not much that Logan can do. Logan, actually, that is a Raminap Ruins in play. So, but, but okay. you need one more land to actually be able to sacrifice the Raminap Ruins, right? Which would have been an extra sacrifice. Mm. You sack a desert, that's an extra point of damage that you could have targeted Grease Fang with. But he's a mana short. I believe he's a mana short here. Yeah. So yeah, we're just you gonna see Parhelion here. Boom! This is the second the time, face. by the way, that Logan Nettles has faced down this Parhelion 2 yeah. in, uh, in this single game, and uh, the second one was plenty enough to get the job done. Players are not going to consult their sideboard. It's kind of interesting. I, uh, I was walking uh, through the player area this morning, and I saw Logan and Reed. Um, for those of you who don't know, they are cousins. They've uh, played Magic with and against each other since they were young. And um, I just said, hey, guys, you know, how's it going? And Logan said, we're working on a sideboard plan so I can get some wins. <laughs> so we'll see if uh, if they came up with a plan. You know, Reed, he was asking Reed for advice about how to sideboard in different matchups. And Reed is extremely well versed in having really solid sideboard plans. So that, that's a nice, uh, nice, that's a nice voice to have at your disposal. Yeah, take a look at Riku's kind of plan here. You still have the elements of the combo, but also sideboarding in some additional cards here to allow him to play a, a more fair game, right? You see two copies of Briarbridge Tracker coming in. You see a third copy of Sky Sovereign because that's a card you can just cast that does work in this matchup. It's another removal spell to get Mayhem Devil off the battlefield. And if you take a look at the kind of the sideboard options here for, for Logan Nettles, I mean, we're looking at 
three copies of Soul Guide Lantern. But again, Riku Kumagai has the answers, right? Four copies of Wither Bloom Command to get the Soul Guide Lantern off the battlefield. They try to fill, you, fill up your graveyard again with cards like Grizzly Salvage. Man, that Wither Bloom Command really pulling over time. Right. And so oftentimes, if you feel like Mardu Grease Fang might be a larger par portion of your metagame, then it might be important to make sure that whatever answers that you have for the graveyard need to be need to cost four or more. So oftentimes, if you're really concerned about Grease Fang, perhaps something like a Leyline of the Void is something that you should consider. All right, game number two just about underway here. We're in round 10 of the World Championship. We're in Las Vegas, and I can see that the uh, show floor has opened up as well. Yeah, a lot of people. Quite an electricity in the air here as well, Paul. Absolutely. <clears throat> Let's get underway here, though, in our game. Looks like a mulligan, though, from Riku. Riku just playing Abzan mid range with this hand, right? Yeah, that looks straight at two <laughs> removal spells. Thought seize, some tracker, value. chariot. <laughs> yeah, this is uh, this is the type of deck, honestly, that Logan plays. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, these grindy yeah. mid range decks usually. But Logan, of course, also has a ton of experience playing various sacrifice strategies with and against one of the most popular decks in Historic, which was a format that was played a lot for Logan to qualify for this event, was the Golgari food deck. So very familiar with these interactions. We're going to see a Thought Seize from Riku Kumagai to start things. He's going to take Fable of the Mirror Breaker. Fatal push off the top of the library for Logan. Good news for both players. They've got some mana. Grissy Salvage as well for Riku Kumagai. Get things rolling for him. Kumagai's going to be happy to see no ovens, no cats. Yeah, and also has the answer for a, a turn three Mayhem Devil. But it, I would guess that Logan's just going to go ahead and run that Fable of the Mirror Breaker that he just drew. Yeah, and this is, of course, where Riku gets to go. Really? Didn't I just take that from you? Yeah, that is that is the curse of casting Thoughtsies. It is. They, they, they always find another copy of the card, or in this, in this instance, or excuse me, in this instance, another copy of the card. I was going to say something better. <laughs> <laughs> that happens, too. Riku gives a slight I nod of resignation. Yeah, I wanted kind of like a like a big, just like just him t tilting off. But you Riku's wanted him always, to just slam his fist yeah, on the table. Yeah, yeah, just yeah, a little a little more emotion. But you no, know, Riku's, Riku's locked in. He's chill. <laughs> okay, here's Grizzly Salvage. The rest of the cards that he doesn't choose are going to end up in the graveyard. He can take a creature or land from these. So Sky Sovereign going into the graveyard. If he just top decks a, a, a Grease Fang here. Oh yeah. Boom. Is it there? Not quite. It's a duress. Now, he does know all the cards in Logan's hands outside of Fatal Push, but there are already two duress targets, so right. not a bad spot. It, it's something where Riku could consider going duress and keeping up a Heartless Act here. Yes. Right? He knows about the Mayhem Devil. Very likely that Logan just plays that out, right? So you can go something like duress, perhaps take the Abrade, which could kill up both the Tracker and the Asika's Chariot cast Heartless Act on one of the creatures, and then next turn untap and play that Asika's Chariot. I like that line. This is an interesting one if Riku goes for it. He is actually just going to play Briarbridge Tracker straight away. Wow, he's going to open it up to the Abrade. Perhaps the Fatal, Fatal push, push. Right. Wow. Yeah. I'm a little surprised. He, like that. Maybe he's leaning on Asika's Chariot to kind of be his end game, but a lot of times Briarbridge Tracker is kind of the last thing, right? It's like an attrition fight, I take this card, you kill this, removal spell, and then you go tracker. Right. Investigate. I mean, this is kind of a, a lightning rod for a removal spell, so in some ways you can think of it as kind of a duress. I see. Right? You're He's like, hey, sort of forcing the issue. Right, I was going to cast this duress to kill you, to get your removal spell anyways. Perhaps I can save it until a, a more important turn. Uh, for example, next turn, right, if I top deck uh, a Grease Fang, Right? Maybe I wanted to rest you then. That makes sense. Play the grease thing. It's also, of course, a blocker for the token, so it really does put pressure on Logan to use a removal spell to get rid of the tracker. 
Now, Riku does not know about this Fatal Push. This Fatal Push could be pretty excellent here. Yeah. For example, you attack with the 2-2, make a treasure, sack the treasure, boom, Fatal Push, yes. get the tracker. And, and it's interesting to note, we're getting into the details here, but that's what we're here for. Riku didn't know about the Fatal Push, right? Maybe if he knew about that, he would have been a little less excited about this interaction. Oh, this also works. Yes. Deadly Dispute to sacrifice the treasure token. And still has access to Fatal Push on the tracker and a braid for either Chariot or a Grease Fang off the top. Now, remember, Riku did keep that Duress in hand. Didn't play it last turn. So there is a, there is a possibility here where Riku could draw the Grease Fang and then go play Grease Fang, get Sky Sovereign into play. Now, the Sky Sovereign not going to be you know, that strong here, right? It'll allow you to kill the 2-2, right? Get him for six points of damage. But again, I mean, Sky Sovereign, one of those cards, sure, you get in for six, you get the, you get a creature off the battlefield, bounces back to your hand. You can just recast it here in this matchup. That's Very right. Very strong. Yeah, let's see if he can find the Grease Fang. Nope, it's a Rafine's Informant this time. So does that mean it's just Chariot time for him? I, you know, he knows about the Abrade. He may not want to expose it. He could go in Informant plus Duress or Informant plus Leave Up Heartless Act. Yeah, th those... those he also has a clue token that he can factor in right, here. So right. a lot of options for Riku. Yeah, if he goes with the Chariot, he's still going to have the two two twos in play. Logan does have a Mayhem Devil in hand, so very good chance you can use that, that Mayhem Devil with that treasure. And you can make an extra treasure with the creature in play. That'll just kill Ezekiel's Chariot. So yeah, Riku playing it patiently here and choosing to go with the line of Heartless Act plus Sacrifice My Clue. Yeah, you feel like that Duress has the Abrade it's got in its, its name sights. On it. Yeah, because I think what you said is true. I think that Riku said, I'm going to play this tracker, and I think that you are going to use Abrade on it, which is what I want, right? right? It's a two for one for Kumagai. It's mana efficient. But that Fatal Push really screwed that up. And now I think he kind of has to reserve duress for the Abrade to protect a top deck Grease Fang or, um, or the Seekus Chariot or something like that. Yeah, but now, Ooh, Soul given, Guide yeah, now that Logan has the Soul Guide Lantern, Grease Fang will not be a great draw here, right? It's not going to, you know, with an active Soul Guide Lantern, Riku needs to find something like a Wither Bloom Command. Riku's got to be getting a little bit annoyed at this point. Right, it's like, he. When are you playing this Mayhem Devil? He knows the Mayhem Devil and the Abrade are in hand, and every card that Logan draws has seemed to just nicely sidestep whatever plan Riku's on at the moment. Oh, okay. So what now, do you find? so that's a Thoughtseize. Although, I mean, there's just a lot of pressure here coming at Riku. Riku's already down to eight life here. He needs to use right? Heartless Act. Yeah. Yeah, use the Heartless Act. If you cast Thoughtseize, you're going to go down to six, and then go down to two here. There's Terra Sunder. Huh. That is a way to get Soul Guy Lantern off the battlefield, but he's not close to comboing off here. Really would have liked to see a land, so maybe you could go something like Duress away your Abrade into the Chariot. He could gamble and play the Informant. Try to get there. He's under a lot of heat. Right. You could do something like... I is just casting a Seeker's Chariot okay here? Well, you could also just cast three spells this turn, right? You can mm -hmm. go Duress your Abrade, Thought she's your Mayhem Devil, play Rafine's Informant, go. Right? Yes. You yes. go down to six, you've dealt with all the cards that Logan has, and then you just have a creature that can just block one of these two twos, and then and then on the following turn, then you can play the Seekers Chariot, where Logan has nothing and is going to need to rely on the top of his deck to find That's right. answers to the Chariot. Yeah, it also bricks Chapter 2. There's no cards in hand there uh, from Fable of the Mirror Breaker. I don't think that Logan was super excited about discarding these two, but... It mitigates that problem. All right, here comes Rafine's Informant, and it's Parhelion. Yeah. Well, that's that's an it's easy not going to be any good in hand. <laughs> yeah, the Soul Guide Lantern's kind of looming there, but doesn't do you any good to keep it. And then there's Thoughtseize for the Mayhem Devil. All right. But this is a uh, tricky territory here for Riku Kumagai. Right. Remember, there's a Hive of the Eye Tyrant in play too. So yes. one damage short of a lethal attack here for Logan Nettles. You see the unlucky witness is going to be fabled away. And there's a thought seize. Not the worst. Can he do all the things? He certainly can with the treasures that he has in play. So he can go thought seize, activate Hive of the Eye Tyrant, get in there, take the Sasika's Chariot most likely. 
right? And then force Riku to basically find an answer to a, a, a menace creature, right? Yes. Along with an extra 2-2 that's in play while at one life. And, and he's going to have no board. Right, yeah. exactly. Yeah, that's a tough I spot for Riku Kubikai. I don't know. I feel like Logan Nettles has um, navigated this quite beautifully. And Kumagai is going to need to get very lucky, and maybe Peel Cardi doesn't have. Yeah, and this is just not going to be enough. That Terra Sunder... He doesn't have enough mana. Expensive removal spell, right? Yeah. It's very versatile. It and it allow it, It's a card that allows you to kill cards like Leyland of the Void, mm -hmm. right? While also having that flexibility of killing anything else at four mana. But in this instance, a little bit short here. Not going to have enough for the attack with two creatures. And he's going to scoop him up. So we're going to get a game number three between Riku Kumagai and Logan Nettles. Riku, kind of on easy mode in game one, but post sideboard, that was a lot harder. Like, interestingly, Logan managed the graveyard of Kumagai. It wasn't relevant this time, like there wasn't anything that was going to happen. But even if Riku had managed to find, you know, a Grease Fang or something, wouldn't have done a whole lot that game. Yeah, I mean, those Fable of the Mirror, Mirror Breakers off the top did so much work. So I mean, good. Riku thought sees one away, and then Logan just found two more copies of that card. Just showcasing the power of that card in all formats. Every format that people can play it in, they tend to. Then Riku looking like he's shaving another copy of Parhelion here on the play. Just down to two of them, huh? Again, just going for kind of a, a more mid-range centric strategy here. Play some threats, play some hand disruption. And then I, if the games go long enough, then maybe I find that Parhelion and I can get that combo off. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask. Is it just that, like, because could he just go full mid-range here and be like, hey, you know, cool Soul Guy Lantern, but, like, I'm not even doing that. Like, maybe brick wall a few of the cards that he brings in? Or, or does this combo take up too many slots to, to do that? I think when you go up to the full four, and given the fact that you know that Logan's going to bring in uh, you know, not only hand disruption, but just the graveyard hit cards as well. It just makes it so much more difficult where you just can't afford to draw too many copies of Parhelion. So you want to keep some just because when you do cast cards like Grizzly Salvage, you go through your deck at a rate where you can eventually find one and put it into your yard. But again, this is not the game where, you know, you're playing Liliana and, and, and choosing to discard it with the Parhelion in your hand. In fact, I mean, he moved two of the Lilianas to a sideboard. It looks like he's actually bringing it back in here. Okay. All right, game number three. Let's see how this goes. This is a cool matchup. Riku Kumagai going to be on the play. It's a great hand here for Riku. It looks solid. Wow, that is a really good hand, isn't it? Yeah, Duress, Wither Bloom Command. As long as he hits a land, right? It's one of those, all right, I look at the top three. Got to find a land. If I don't, I'm very, very sad. And Logan, not the most interactive hand, right? No, Kurt, with what he has, doesn't have a way to stop a potential turn three combo here on the draw. But you've got lands, you've got spells. You do have a push and a Fable of the Mirror Breaker. Close one here for Logan. He really wants cards like Thoughtseize in the opener, right? Or uh, a Braid. Just a car cards that ensure that you will be able to kill Mardu, uh, excuse me, Grease Fang on turn three. Yeah, Braid seems really well positioned, either able to kill the vehicles, the vehicles or the Grease Fang. Like, that's that's a tough one. All right, turn one Duress is going to take, once again, Fable. So Logan will draw one before turn three. Although it wasn't a Thought Seize, which is really the unlucky, right? Like, that's the one that guarantees that it comes to the top of your library. Here's Unlucky Witness, speaking of. Oh, and just found a land here. So will Riku just go ahead and play this Wither Bloom Command or hold it for a potential hate card? He does have a Terra Sunder in hand as well to be able to nab Soul Guide Lanterns. But if he doesn't play the Wither Bloom Command, he's basically doing nothing this turn. It's not under much pressure, just the 1-1 one, one Unlucky Witness. That thing really needs to kind of die to matter. Yeah. Maybe not super 
interested in killing this unlucky witness, right? It could just no. reveal a thought seize. And <laughs> right. But it does present Logan with a creature to sacrifice to Witch's Oven or uh, Village Rites, Deadly Dispute, stuff like that. He's certainly going to mill himself and try to hit a land. Hmm. He is actually going okay. to go ahead and kill Unlucky Witness here. And he does find a land. And he found a Thoughtseize. And uh, probably going to play that one. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> uh. I swear, I this, like is not, saw this, this is not pre-recorded, I promise. There are lots of people out here watching the games at the same time as I am. Hold on, let me get my script. <laughs> uh, this was not pre-recorded. Exactly. Paul's an honest and good person. Copyright Wizards of the Coast 2022. <laughs> Look, you can't help it that you see all the angles, Paul. Right. This, right? Is, a, this is a tough choice. Lots is of great. It? I mean, lots of great cards here. I mean, um, you do have Fatal Push as a way to kill the tracker, but Nasika's Chariot is the most threatening card. Yes. Right? But Bribery Tracker is the card that Rico can play next turn. That's right. And it, and it is also just a two for one. There's a Terra Sender, and we see the Soul Guide Lantern in hand for Logan as well. Right, because Logan could also be thinking, well, if I take Tracker, and then Riku plays Chariot, then I can push a token, and then you can't even crew the Chariot unless you find something, right? Yeah. I do always, always a tough decision on long-term versus short-term planning, right? right. Uh, generally, people default to what's the next thing that you can do, but you have to think long-term with a deck, especially with a hand like Logan has here. He doesn't have much going on. He does not. It's a very, very reactive hand. And that's kind of how he sideboards for this matchup. He kind of turns into more of a Rakdos control deck with, uh, or maybe a Rakdos mid-range deck with a lot more interaction. That's where he wants to be anyway. Yeah. Like, let's yeah. just be honest. Right. <laughs> this is for Logan like, I lives. recognize that Cat Oven is powerful, but what I really want to do, my happy place, that's is right. just boarding in all thought seasons and removal spells and preventing you from, from kind of doing what you want to do. That runs in the family. Yeah, right. Cauldron familiar off the top of the library here for Logan. So at least something, but it looks like he's just going to be as mana efficient as possible and put Giganta the Wellspring in hand. Like, super reactive draw here from Logan. Yeah, and you know Riku's just going to, he's like, you didn't take the chariot, but you know, I have nothing else either. Right. I'm just going to play this out and, uh, you know, try to figure out what kind of removal spells you have to slow me down. Yeah, and this could get really tricky here for Logan because if he does decide to fatal push, to kill one of the cats. I mean, there's a lot of draw steps for Kumagai that right. can get that chariot rolling. And well, we've all seen how that goes. You could also set up, you can also just cast Soul Guy Lantern, right? Just keep it in play. And at some point, sack it, maybe cash it in to draw a card. Sure. And then that turns on the revolt on Fatal Push and allows you to use a Fatal Push on just the chariot if you if you don't want to give, your, give Riku the, the chance of drawing another creature to crew the chariot. We might also see Riku just uh, channel that Takenuma, get that sure. tracker back into hand. Just, just pure value from both of our players here. And so Logan might just, because he, he knows about the Takenuma, just cast Olgai Lantern, get that creature out of the graveyard. I think it may be the only target here. Okay, seems reasonable, but you can't love your position if you're, uh, if you're Logan at this point. It's a very precarious spot to be in. What, what about just, just hard, ca hard cast Gigantha? The rest the does nothing. Well, so it will take the Fatal Push, but of course, Logan will then cast the Fatal Push in response. But that right. does mean that the Chariot is safe from a Fatal Push. Mm -hmm. So now Logan is just forced, forced to cast to kill it. a cat. Forced to kill a cat. And this then gives Riku now the ability to draw a Rafine's Informant, Grease Fang, anything, to go ahead and crew that chariot. Uh, yeah, he can just crew now, right? Oh, excuse me. Yeah, yeah. Right. Because he, he will know all the cards in hand 
at that point. Right, 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 right. Of course, of course. Yeah, so now you just get in, and now Logan's in a ton of trouble. Yeah, huge problem now. So again, we've seen what Asika's Chariot does. It tends to avalanche, right? It just gets out of control. The board gets bigger and bigger, and Logan's going to need to rip something quickly. Gigantha can help a little bit. Gigantha can help, but, but remember, Sunder. Logan knows about Terra Sunder. Oh, and kind of forcing the action here, potentially, with Soul Guy Lantern. Mm -hmm. Did he hit? I think there was a... Was he, there a Rafine's Informant, maybe? Yes, there was. Okay. And I think that's the only... He can get a Planeswalker or a creature with talking. Was there a Liliana in there as well? Don't think so. So I think, I think it was just Informant. Logan's okay with that, and he knows he can't just rely on just hard casting a 5-5, five, five, which normally would be great. I mean, this does force the action here from Riku, but I think Riku would be happy to just go ahead, use that Terra Sunder, get Gigantha off the battlefield, and then crack in here for a 4 and make another token. Yeah, it's it's simple. Yeah. Kill the creature and attack. Logan, of course, already knew all of this stuff. Both of these players playing hand disruption spells that give them a lot of information about what's going on with their opponent. Unfortunately, sometimes that information is just bad news, right? I right. can't do anything about it, and now he's getting absolutely ran over by this Asika's Chariot. And now, I mean, what, this, what can is, Logan find? this is just like, this is the reverse of the last game, right? Logan is the one who had the army of 2-2s in the last one, yep. and now we have to think about what collection of draws Logan can have to get himself out of this, and it usually is some combination of Mayhem Devil plus Cat Oven, so he's several steps removed from putting all of that together. Super awkward draw here for Logan. He draws Duress, and the only target is Parhelion 2, so if he casts it, he's kind of just doing Riku a favor. <laughs> he's helping. That's rough. Right. And he's shaking his head. Logan Edels does not like what he sees. These players are both sitting on a 5-4 and four record, and with a victory here this round, they are still on track I, I wonder, for a top four. With a loss, it puts them in a shaky ground, to say the least. Yeah, I wonder if Logan has to just crack this Soul Guide Lantern and just draw a card, right? And just, Absolutely. Just find a way to, to get Chariot off the battlefield here. Here's the bad news now for Nettles. He's going to fire off Duress. You're welcome. And you do have Sokin's in, in hand, so you can channel to make some chump blockers. That's not exactly where you want to be. Yeah, just trying to buy potential draw steps, but uh, that's desperation mode if you're doing that. Right. Maybe Calder Familiar is not so good. He's had it this whole time. Well, you know, it's 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 a combo. That's the combo for uh, this deck. It's a one-two punch. A combination. Right. Let's see. Yes. land drawn here for Kumagai, but he gets to connive off of this Rafine's Informant, so that could turn into something more productive. Let's find out. Oh, it oh. did. It's a Grease Fang. Wow. That is exactly what he wanted to see <laughs> here. And uh, Parhelion yeah. in the yard. There is a Soul Guide Lantern in play, and Logan Nettle must sacrifice Soul Guide Lantern here to Super stay alive. Rough. You saw, I don't know if you saw Logan kind of just did the hand, like, what am I supposed to do here? Now I have to crack this. That puts him down a card. The Seek is cherry. It's going to get fired up. The Sokin's in will keep him alive, but um, maybe just for a turn. Brutal. Is there, a, is there a sweeper in Logan's sideboard? Good question. Do this not is, see any, uh, This sadly. is a good time to ask that question, right. Paul. Do, are there any anger of the gods or anything like that? And I do not see that in Logan Nettles 75. No, the Colgon's Command is the only card that I could see that could, uh, you know, like kill the Chariot, kill a token, but I, I have a feeling that he's going to be overwhelmed by attackers right. by that point anyway. And this is, you know, that, the perfect example of something of what we discussed earlier, right? When we were talking about this matchup and just kind of why this Abzan Grease Fang deck gets a few extra percentage points because it, because it can just win games by playing fair magic. It's That's like, right. look, Isika's Chariot is a powerful magic card. I'm just going to cast this, and you're going to have to find a way to deal with it. And there we go. Riku Kumagai with Obzon Greasewing navigates himself to yet another victory. He improves to 6-4. and four. This is going to put Logan Nettles in a sketchy spot. He's 5-5. Five and five.